Welcome to the Solid Sports and Gaming Channel. You're watching the Solid Sports Video Blog, Episode 66. Today's date is October 15th, 2018. I'm Troy Westhead. Thank you for joining me once again for this special Solid Sports Video Blog. As the NBA season starts tomorrow night, this is a wall-to-wall -wall NBA season preview. Everything you need to know about the 2018-2019 season, I'll try to break down. So I'll break down every team in the NBA. We're going to start the Eastern Conference from the top. To the bottom to the top I should say from team number 15 all the way to number one and who I think will represent the East in the finals and the West as well we do the same thing in the Western Conference I'll give you my uh, Eastern Western Conference final list as well and prediction of who they win MVP this year uh, rookie of the year and also defensive player of the year this year as well um, thank everybody for the support this weekend I was live a couple of times I was live on Instagram as well but well, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, I've been really excited about that game. Um, I was hoping to get a few rounds in before I start working, but I probably ain't going to even do today. Um, I wanted to put this together as well. Had some uh, off work to do as well. Um, but thank everybody, uh, my sister in particular, um, that was there live on both platforms, Instagram and YouTube. I did a live video, and I do some live video um, sometimes um, during the week. Um, on Black Ops and uh, the sports blog uh, got some views this week as well. Uh, the next one is Wednesday, of course, as we look at the Thursday Night Football game. And all my rest of my video game plays here, so just check out my channel, check out all the rest of the projects Spider Man and Mega Man 11 for sure. Videos are upcoming, so uh, just keep posted and I thank you guys for the support. And we also go ahead and get started with this preview. As like I said, I briefly touch on every team in the league, started from the uh, number 15 in the East all the way up to I think who will be the first seed in the East this year. And we'll start with number 15 and I have here the Atlanta Hawks. I got them finishing last in the East unfortunately. Um, could finish higher. Like I said this uh, next group, this uh, if I say this first four, could finish last or higher. Um, but the Hawks, um, honestly other than Trey Young was the young hot rookie of course who uh, with the uh, Oklahoma. Um, coming in this year, uh, other than him, I don't can't really name too many Hawks, and that's usually not a good sign, especially if you can't name your players, that's not good. Usually your team ain't that good, but uh, I think they'd be an excited team to watch though with him, and uh, so we'll see how things will break down um, for Atlanta. But um, like I said, they had their run when they tried to make the playoffs, try to compete, but they had Millsap and. Uh, Al Horford, and, you know, all those guys have moved on. So now Atlanta trying to rebuild. So um, probably gonna take some years, but maybe they'll be back at the relevant soon. But uh, I got them finishing last in the East. Uh, number 14, the Atlanta Magic. Um, got the young um, rookie, they got, a, uh, they got a young rookie as well, Mo Bamba um, from Texas. Uh, we'll see how he perform. Um, he looked good in the preseason. I heard flashes of him. Um, uh, still got Eric Gordon, um, got some young talent there in Orlando, but uh, still not enough to really compete, at least for a playoff spot. I don't think they will sniff the playoffs again this year. Um, well, both Atlanta and Orlando will probably have high picks next year. Maybe that'll elevate them. Maybe they'll get a free agent or something to elevate them. But for right now, um, just on the rebuilding stage, so I only have Orlando finish at 14, but it could be finished higher than that. Uh, like I said, all these teams have potential. They will never know what injuries um, will come to the teams that I think will finish above them or to themselves. So um, just by me, uh, it was just hard. It's hard to do. This whole day was kind of hard. I overthink some things. Uh, I'm really, really sure about the top of the East, honestly. But uh, Orlando can finish higher, but right now I only had them finishing 14th in the East. Number 13, I got the Chicago Bulls. Same thing. Um, of course, uh, made runs in the playoffs with uh, the Derrick Rose era, Jimmy Butler. Of course, you hear about him a lot lately in the news. Um, that team is gone, so they trying to rebuild um, with uh, Zach Levine and a lot of young guys there in Chicago. Um, like I said, had the potential to finish a little higher, um, but I only have them 13th right now. Um, number 12, the Brooklyn Nets. Um, Brooklyn Nets, of course, uh, made the trade last year. I think it was last year for D'Angelo Russell. Um, but other than D'Angelo Russell, not a lot of talent around him. 
um, but he's a good player. Um, overachieved just a tiny bit last year. A lot of people think they was going to be a basement thriller team, um, but they was they improved a little bit when they made that trade. So um, we'll see uh, how the Nets do. They they uh, sleep with potential for Jimmy Butler. He's just one of the teams he named out loud. So if something crazy happens, maybe he could elevate them higher. But uh, honestly, I don't think he's going to wind up being on the Nets. If he leave, I think it's going to be the Miami or the Clippers, um, in my opinion. But We'll see. So more Miami because Miami's in the East. But um, we'll see how the Nets do this year. Um, could finish lower though. Could finish higher. We'll see. Um, number eleven, the New York Knicks. The other New York team. Um, Porzingis won't be back to the second half of the season, so that's part of the reason why I don't have them making the playoffs this year. A um, young rookie. Uh, uh, Kevin Knox, he looks good and he's confident. So we'll see um, how he do um, in this first season. Um, so we'll see the Knicks a little intriguing team. Um, but they uh, Knicks fans looking towards next summer. Uh, two guys, well, Damian Lillard flat out said he wouldn't mind coming to the Knicks. And there's rumors about the Kevin Durant as well. So if they get either one of those guys, That'll definitely put them at least as a playoff team in the Eastern Conference. So fans crossing their fingers, hoping one of them will come there on their own next year. But next will be excited to watch West Virginia's get back. Um, but I got to, I mean, I'm the, not wishing bad on Virginia, but he's seven footers is always hard with their legs. He got leg problems and stuff. And the way he plays, uh, probably going to be nicked and bruised his whole career. Um, unfortunately, but uh, hopefully he stay healthy the second half of the year and Knicks will make a push. Um, but I only got to finish 11th in the East. Number 10, the Detroit Pistons. Team with promise. Um, of course, RJ Drummond's still there. Um, Reggie Jackson. Got a nice little young squad. Um, Steph Van Gundy had moved, uh, moved on. They got a new coach. Um, we'll see how the Pistons play this year. Has potential, uh, I would say they have potential playoff team in the lower half of the East. Um, so they can finish probably higher than Tiff, but I have them Tiff right now. Um, I look at everybody that's in front of them, I think they ain't no better than the teams that's in front of them. Um, unless Andre Drummond have a monster, monster year and carry them into the playoffs. But other than that, I don't see Detroit finishing higher than Tiff, but they could potentially be a playoff team. Injuries, like I said, you never know. Or just outplaying everybody else, so we'll see. This is a potential playoff team at number 10. Number 9, I sort of just changed this. Like, yesterday, I put this together a couple of days ago. But, uh, um, at first, I ain't gonna lie, at first I had Cleveland number 9. But then I pretty much flip-flopped them. I switched. Well, I actually, I moved up the Wizards. I had the Wizards 8th. I moved them up to 7th. Had the Hornets 7th. I put Cleveland in there at 8. I got the Charlotte Hornets at 9. So, we're gonna talk about the Charlotte Hornets. Um, potentially, like I said, it could make the playoffs. Of course, they had nine, so in my opinion, they wouldn't be surprised they make the playoffs at eight, seven seed or something like that. Um, Kemba Walker is uh, proving himself in this league, but other than him, they lost to White Howard. Um, he's gone to the Wizards, and I was really I had the Wizards out. You know, I was thinking about leaving the Wizards out because they've been so disappointed last year, but they got too much talent not to make the playoffs. So, but to stick stick with the Charlotte Hornets. Um, just uh, not, not, enough, not enough talent around them. They got some nice little young players. Um, but I just don't think it's enough. Um, I think they're going to be outside looking at it once again. Um, in the East at 9. So number 8. I got the Cleveland Cavaliers. I stick there and make the playoffs. I think Kevin Love will sort of have a breakout year. It would just sound weird to say for him because he's a veteran. But if they can get back to the... Uh, sort of more to the Minnesota Kevin Love. More score... Probably still give you a good 9-10 rebounds. Be more of that go-to score. Um, I like the rookie Saxon from Alabama. I think he uh, stabilized that Cleveland offense as well. Uh, Cleveland's still not a bad team. I mean, LeBron, you know, he carried, he definitely carried them to the finals four years in a row. But they wasn't a scrub team. J.R. Spears still there. Maybe he has Blossom, Tristan Thompson. They got talent there. And I thought about it. Like, no, nah, they, they still a playoff team. Maybe on the lower half of the East now, but... I couldn't disrespect them that much, so I switched them up. I put them eighth. 
So, uh, very potentially. Uh, could finish a little higher. They got the talent too. Wouldn't be surprised if they finish 7 4 6. Like, 6 is the highest though, because the top 5, I feel confident that they're going to be the top 5. Um, number 7 of the Washington Wizards, as I mentioned. Um, very disappointed year last year. John Wall, probably a top, easily a top 2 3 4 point guard in the league. Um, Bradley Beal is underrated. It's a little streaky, but underrated. Dwight Howard still I think he got some good years left. I think this year he is a more of a proven. Well, it's been a proven year for him for years, but I think he has the potential to stabilize the Washington Wizards in the middle, which they had problems with um, the last few years. Um, too much talent. Just can't see them not making the playoffs unless somebody get hurt. Um, got to finish the seven. They'd be a one and done team though, but. Um, too much talent around that team for them to not make it. So I got them seventh, but I made that change pretty much yesterday. Even though I've been trying to put it together for like the last week, I made that switch. I didn't feel right. I didn't feel right like put like put Cleveland in the playoffs. Yeah, more I thought about the Hornets, I was like, that I had the Hornets seventh, and I don't really didn't know why. So I went ahead and put them down a the ninth. Um, number six, the Miami Heat. Um, uh. Talent everywhere. Uh, Josh Richardson, uh, the knucklehead, I saw white side. <laughs> um, the D Wade came back for one last year. I think this is really his last year. I'd be surprised if he don't retire after this year. Um, another team that's potentially could get Jimmy Butler. I think they're in the lead for to get him. If he does get moved, I think it'll be to the Heat, and that can improve them, make them more of a somewhat a contender. But not really. I still think they had uh, uh, Milwaukee, Philadelphia, uh, Toronto, and Boston to deal with. But Heat, that potential, they play hard. Um, uh, they were sort of, I don't say disappointing, but people thought they would do better last year. But um, I got them finished six in the East, being a playoff team. Number five, the Indiana Pacers. Uh, this is a team that shocked me last year. This is probably the most surprising team to be last year. Victor Oladipo, give us props. Um, he was a big addition to that team. Everybody thought, well, they traded Paul George. That's it. They done. They ain't making the playoffs. I did. I ain't going to lie. I wrote them off immediately after that trade. And they shocked the world. Really much almost beat Cleveland. Gave Cleveland run for their money in that first round series. Um, they will probably have a chance to upset whoever the fourth seed is. Who I will tell you in a second. Um, uh, Miles Turner, they got a lot of young talent there. A lot of uh, quiet guys. Don't hear a lot about, but they got a talented team. Um, look for the Pacers to make some noise, be irrelevant in the East. I got them finish at fifth. Number four, the Milwaukee Bucks. Um, sort of disappointing last year. Only finished sixth in the East last year. This is the year of the Greek Freak. Uh, potential uh, MVP candidate for sure. I think he's taking a step forward. I think this team as a whole takes a step forward. They've been underachieving for years. They got the talent in the Eastern Conference. They have to at least finish fourth. If they finish less than fourth, I would be very disappointed in Milwaukee. Um, uh, this is the year for them. This is the year to make some noise. Um, so I got them finishing fourth in the Eastern Conference. I think uh, the Greek Freak will be an MVP candidate. Um, if they finish higher than fourth, get into that top three, top two somehow, then I think he have a big chance of winning it. Um, but I got Milwaukee finishing fourth. Number three, the Philadelphia 76ers. Um, had a breakout legend last year, Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. Of course, there's the two anchors on the team. Um, Philadelphia needs some more shooting. They got JJ Redd, I believe he's still there. Um, they picked up someone in free agency. Um, but uh, they, they got to get improved on that. If they get people that can shoot, have a beat inside, have Simmons do his thing, uh, they feel that field could potentially um, break through. But uh, we have to see. Um, as I said, my only worry about them is they shooting. Can they uh, find some, somebody to consistently shoot from the outside? Um, and can they play better defensively as well? Of course, they had the, what, the 15 game winning streak to go into the playoffs? And then ran into that bus saw. Um, oh, beat Miami in the first round. Then ran into Boston. And Boston um, pretty much took it to them as well. Um, but uh, honestly, uh, they might get that save as far again. 
But um, unless they can shoot the ball better, they ain't gonna get no further than that. But I got no finisher third of the East. And a potential would do and be if he's taking a step forward, maybe potential play, uh, MVP candidate. Maybe. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Number two, the Toronto Raptors. Uh, of course, you know they got Kawhi Leonard in the offseason. The drama he had in uh, San Antonio now, you know, Jimmy Butler now. But he looked committed. He looks good in the preseason. He says all in for the season in Toronto. Not Still not guaranteed to come back. But still, um, you get a top three player in the league if he plays hardest. And he, to me, like I said, he's a definitely MVP candidate. I'll give you my, who I'm going to pick for that award. But he's definitely in the running. If Toronto might not finish at first in this conference or wide up surprises of people, I think he has the position to win it. Uh, still got Kyle Lowry. Still got uh, Serge Ibaka. Still got a nice, talented team there. A nice little bench. So Toronto, you know. They're going to make a push. Um, definitely, uh, we have to admit, it's a premium from him and DeMar DeRozan. So, if he's all in and really committed, uh, Toronto has the potential to represent the East. Not just uh, strongly as a second seed, but to make it to the finals as well. Definitely a contender. Toronto number one, number two. So, that means number one is the Boston Celtics. Just a deep, deep team with Tatum, J Josh Brown, Kyrie coming back. Uh... Joy Hayward's back. Al Horford, underrated center. Um, just a deep team. Terry Rozier ain't going nowhere. Um, just a deep team. Um, Kyrie said he won't leave. And that's another person from the Knicks you can look out for. Potentially could go there. But Kyrie said he's not leaving. Um, can they all stay healthy? That's the only thing. If they don't, I don't see why they should be a one seed and a strong contender in the Eastern Conference. Um, got the number one seed last year without Kyrie and made it almost to the finals without him. So you yeah, add him back, you yeah, add going Hayward back. Just going to be now, can they uh, all coexist? Can they get a good rotation? Get enough shots for everybody? Because Tatum and Brown is the real deal. Um, still, potentially one of them could be moved during the regular season and maybe to improve their team, get some more role players. To build around the team. We'll see what they do. They have assets. They have draft picks. So Boston can make some moves. This probably not be the team. They'll go all the way. But if they still don't touch the team. It's still a great team. Boston number one. In the Eastern Conference. So that's the East. We're going to go over to the West now. We'll start from the bottom again. We'll start up. From number 15. Go all the way up to number one. West was hard for me again. You know. Especially at the top. At the bottom. Both was hard. Uh, but I think these first two. Um, still got a long way to go. Number 15 is Sacramento Kings. Um, they got Bagley the third from Duke. Um, good player. Let's see how he improved. Got some young players there with DRF Fox. And you can name a couple of other rookies they have drafted the last few years. But still that much improved in the win-loss column. Might be an exciting team to watch overall. Not, you know. But uh, still don't see them finishing... Potentially can finish a little higher, but don't really see them since it's no higher than last. But they have some young talent. Let the young talent take that step forward. I don't see them finishing higher than 15th. Number 14, the Phoenix Suns. Um, of course, got uh, the kid um, from Arizona. Name ain't coming to me right now. Center. Um, uh, still got Devin Booker. They gave him his money, so he ain't going nowhere. Um, Phoenix, like I said, a lot of young talent down there. Still got Tyson Chandler, the veteran. Um, but just not enough talent-wise to put it all together. Um, just like I said about teams in the East. Potentially could finish a little higher, could finish a little, could finish last, which surprised me. Um, be another team to watch in the West. The West is so deep, you know. It's like even with some injuries, I don't see them finishing that much higher than where they are. So I got Phoenix at number 14. Number 13, the Dallas Mavericks. Um, I think this is definitely Dirk the Whiskey last year, just like I said about the, the way Wade. This is, I think it's 20th season, which is unbelievable. Um, if you remember how he came into the league, struggled his first few years, then changed his game, pretty much evolutionized the game. Uh, to me, a first ballot Hall of Famer. Um, if you add his international success as well, um, pretty much... Uh, if he was out there um, right now at his younger days, he'd be a number one pick because he could shoot from anywhere, score from anywhere. Of course, he's older in age, so um, not as nimble as he was, but 
Um, definitely one of the best scorers of all time. Um, so this will probably be a swamp sauce for him. But they got a nice little Tether T as well, young guys. Um, they did add DeAndre Jordan, so that helps them defensively. Um, so potentially can finish a little higher, but I think the West is just so strong talent wise. If they got a nice team, they'd probably be able to compete in the East, but they in the West, so only got them finish at 13th. Number 12, the LA, the LA Clippers. Uh, um, got some young guys, got some young talent there as well. Uh, of course, they lost the Andre Jordan, so that's a big loss. Um, potentially could get Jimmy Butler, uh, so that's a team to look out for for him to go there as well. Um, uh, just the Clippers, like I said, they sort of rebuilding as well. The Chris Paul. Blake Griffin, you know, he's in Detroit, which I forgot to mention about Detroit, which is why it's just so tough, man. Like, they, I got them for the for the East, but they could potentially be a playoff team. Like I said, I forgot that Blake was there, but um, that whole era is over with. So uh, Clippers just trying to rebuild. Um, I, wanna, I don't like to use the word tank, but I think they wouldn't mind if they have a bad year to get a high pick get a young talent in there next year but um don't see them finishing no higher than 12 um i got them finish the 12th in the west and, uh, number 11 of memphis grizzlies um as far as i know they get chris uh mike conley back which is he's a great point guard they go along with mark basal so that's just talent right there that might could get them win some games but um like i said a bad uh strong western conference um it's gonna be tough for Memphis. Um, got some young rookies as well, um, so we'll see how Memphis improves. Um, that great grind era is over with. <laughs> you know, another era that you look back over, which I used to love. I picked them to go to the finals one year and they didn't make it, but I used to love that team. But um, after Grizzly finishes 11th in the West. Number 10, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, wild card team here. Can't finish higher. Can't finish lower if they do lose Jimmy Butler. Um, of course, the Wiggins and Towns um, have to take a step forward if they're going to uh, propel this team to another playoff berth. Um, uh, right now, as uh, latest on Jimmy Butler, he's uh, he practiced yesterday. Um, he will play um, opening night for them, which is Wednesday night against the Spurs. Um, so right now, he's here. So I don't see him like taking or not uh, cooperating. I think he's going to play his normal hard self. So with that being said, this uh, this tip could be a little higher because um, some of the teams down this bottom west I'm not 100% sure about. So they have the potential to make the playoffs again, but um, with all this drama with Jimmy Butler, I think it's going to distract them a little bit, um, or he might just wind up being traded, which will drastically disapprove this year, depending on what they get back. But I think Williams and Towns ain't ready for leadership roles yet, obviously, and that's the big problem here. And I think they only finished 10th of the West. And they'd be just outside the playoffs. Okay, number 9. Um, sad for me to say this, but uh, they should be proud to lift their heads up. The San Antonio Spurs. Um, potentially could make the playoffs. This team's that's in front I'm not 100% sure about, like I said. Um, like this group from 10 to, I say from 10 to 7, this group of month of mission could finish either way. Um, but the Spurs have made the playoffs, I would have say 20 straight seasons. So that's remarkable. The modern day uh, standard for basketball, Greg Popovich, of course, probably one of the best coaches of all time, easily. Um, five championships during this run. Um, but Tim Duncan ain't walking through that door. But Gasol is, and LaMarcus Arvis is there. Uh, um, if they can somehow cause this, um, sort of like how they did last year, Spurs would be a talented team, and then the modern rose into that mix. I think he's a little underrated, he gets a lot of flat. You know, even though I say Kawhi Lit is better than him, but he's not a bad player himself. Um, so the Spurs had the talent. They lost a lot, a couple of their young point guards, though. I think one of them out for uh, eight to six, uh, six to eight weeks. So um, injuries biting them already. But uh, Spurs, like I said, ninth definitely can finish in that, you know, between nine and seven, I believe. Um, so look out for the Spurs. But uh, I think they got the. Probably for the first time this, uh, in 20 years, probably really don't think they might. There's a chance they might not make the playoffs. That's all basically what I'm, what I'm saying. And if they don't, they, uh, 20 years being in the playoffs is uh, remarkable in any sport, no matter what sport it is. So I got the Spurs for this in ninth. 
in the West. Number eight, the New Orleans Pelicans. Um, like I said, don't feel sure about a lot. Of, pretty much a wild card to me, but they got Anthony Davis. They lose Boogie Cousins to the Warriors, um, which I don't know why they ain't want to keep it. They played very well with him. And Rondo, I would have kept those. I would have kept that team together. But they still got Drew Holiday as well. Um, I think um, possibly this could be Anthony Davis last year. It's not um, a secret. Um, Lakers is already the rumored team he might go to next year. He signed with uh, LeBron James agent uh, Chris Paul in that group, so potentially could add him to the Lakers maybe next year. But for right now, I don't think uh, New Orleans going to move him before then, or they could, so which is something to look out for. But um, just think after they was too talented, I think they at least get him into an eighth spot. Got New Orleans finishing eighth. Number seven, the Denver Nuggets. The young Nuggets uh, like to run and score. Um, of course, uh, Jokic, uh, the center, um, keeps improving and improving. Got a lot of young guards there. Um, they added mill set. Um, so, uh, Nuggets potential. Uh, got them seventh though, um, but I don't know, like I said, I don't, maybe because I don't watch the Nuggets, I don't see the Nuggets a lot. They should be on TV a little bit more this year. Dude, that they almost made the playoffs, but don't know a lot about the Nuggets to be honest with you. So um, that's why I'm sort of like skeptical of them. But um, at the same time, can't poo poo what they did last year. And I think Minnesota's going to take a drop back, and then with the Lakers improving as well. So a lot of teams moving around a little bit. But I got the Nuggets finishing seventh, but potentially could miss the playoffs again. Could finish maybe a little higher, you know, I might say, but. Uh, I think seven is a good spot for them. I got them finishing seven. Number six, the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, Damian Lillard, of course, to me, one of the top players in this league. I love him. I love his game. Um, you know, as a fan, you like to see a player stay with his one team, but I do believe he might be moved as well. Um, or he, well, he basically said he wants. Uh, what I was saying that he might be gone after this year. So um, maybe Portland. Or Come up with a trade, who knows, you know, who knows. Like I said, days happen in the NBA sometimes out the blue. But if every day stay the way they are, Portland got a nice little squad with him. Um, CJ McCollum, uh, which I like his competitiveness. He was in the news, him beefing with Kevin Durant and all this other stuff. So uh, he definitely likes to compete. Um, and they finished third, I think, last year in the West. I mean, they lost in the first round. But, um... I got the Blazers finish at six. Um, number five, the Utah Jazz. I really love the Jazz. Uh, I think it's a sleeper team. Could finish higher, um, but I got the finish at fifth. Um, my man, uh, uh, oh my God, I hate when I have a brain lock. Oh, Donovan Mitchell, my man. Dang, I hate when I have brain locks. That's why I should write more notes down. But uh, to me, rookie of the year, like I said, he got screwed last year. He should have won that. No offense to Ben Simmons, but I just don't like, even though he ain't play, which I've said this before, you still get NBA experience. I still think you just you just don't win the award. You're just not a rookie to me anymore. He was a rookie, but he was hurt. Simple as that. So, you know, and I just think you know, Donovan Mitchell would have had the better year, you know, as far as what he, his accomplices. So, Anyway, um, I think he improved. Um, I like his game. I like his, his mindset. Um, still got Rudy Gobert. Got that nice young talent around him. Um, uh, Ricky Rubio is an underrated point guard. Um, just like this team overall, how they put together. Um, potentially could finish higher than fifth, but I got him fifth. Because pretty much the next four teams, the star power, you just can't ignore it. And you can't dis disrespect it. But other than that, wouldn't be surprised if the Jazz get into that top four, top three. Wouldn't shock me. I wouldn't be off my off, swept off my feet by that. It wouldn't be a big shock to me. But I got to finish a solid five in the West. Number four, the OKC Thunder. Of course, Russell Westbrook. He is injured going into this year. Had a minor knee surgery. Um, not sure if he'll be ready uh, tomorrow night against the Warriors. Um, Paul George so shocked some people stayed inside the law inside the deal um, he wants to be here so that's good for us I guess they have some more competition out there I think actually you know this respect to come out of athlete but I think they're gonna play better this year I think they'll be able to move the ball I think they'll be more of knowing who role is whose 
Um, Dundas still scared me. They bench still a little bit weak. Need to improve a little bit. Um, but other than that, um, but Westbrook and Paul George, um, I think they could carry them to at least a fourth seed in the Western Conference. But we'll see how injured uh, Westbrook really is. Um, and that'll be a factor. But um, hopefully he stay healthy all year. So does Paul George and the Thunder. I got them finishing fourth. Number three, the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers are back. LeBron James, the king of LA, whatever you want to call it. Some fans, some Kobe fans hating a little bit. But I think the Lakers are fairly relevant again. Um, the young talent was already there with Lonzo Ball, um, Brandon Ingram, uh, Kyle Kuzma. Uh, Randall has moved on. He moved to New Orleans. That just popped in my mind. So that's another talent there. I think he's underrated. I think he'll help Anthony Davis now and there. So now I feel a little bit better about them finishing eighth now. But anyway, yeah, because he got the young talent. Um, like I said, rumors that Ball could be moved. Maybe to improve the team. Um, so uh, just a team to watch out for. LeBron being there is going to always be drama here and there. We'll see what happens with uh, La La uh, Lonzo Ball's dad, uh, LeVar Ball. Let's see if he'll say some stuff out of his mouth. Um, so the Lakers are interesting again. Uh, I think that for this third, I think LeBron will get the best out of the uh, young talent around him. Can't see the Lakers finish a little lower than third. Um, and the league, like I said, is very exciting uh, season. Uh, don't like the Warriors. The Warriors are probably still a favorite, but uh, some teams, if they uh, you put them on paper and say, well, you know, you might could challenge the Warriors. We'll see. The Lakers is one of them. Um, they have finished third, in my opinion. Number two, the Houston Rockets. Uh, the Houston Rockets to be a little wild card. I got to finish the second more out of respect. I think James Harden is a top three player in this league, especially scoring the basketball. Chris Paul is a winner. Uh, with them two alone, you know, they could get to a uh, higher place. I think they they team had uh, lost of, lots of talent though. They kept Clint Capella, but they lost um, uh, to Trevor Reza, which is a big loss to me. Um, they lost some guys on defense, so. But at the same time, I thought about it more. I'm like, well, they still got Chris Paul and James Harden. So maybe it lost a little bit on defense, but they'd still be able to move the ball and score the ball. So um, and they still got Eric Gordon. And, um, even though people sit laugh at this, but uh, Ryan Anderson, he can shoot the ball, though. So um, and then Mel add Melo, uh, who don't mind being a role player. And I think that would help Houston as well. I was like, okay, well. Maybe they do still respect it to be least to be second. So I got Houston finishing number two. Um, but I don't know. I mean, that's a team that, like I said, they can finish a little lower. These teams below them, I think, match them in talent wise. But I think Houston has the better system with that, Tony. Um, gotta admit that. And the better team as well. You know, team basketball. I think the Lakers are gonna take some time to uh, mesh together. And the dub that you still don't really know how that's going to turn out, you know, going off last year. So that's why I was like, I can still feel Houston at two without really thinking too much of it. So that leaves number one, the Golden State Warriors. No surprise. Everybody's back. And they add Boogie Cousins, even though he's not going to be ready to probably about the All-Star break. The Rat, uh, Draymond Green, um, Steph Curry, uh, Clay Thompson, you know the crew. Um, still got that same bench, which I think it'd be approved from last year. Um, even though they lost Javel McGee to uh, the Lakers, I, I'm not laughing about that. I think he was a big key and then repeated last year. Um, but the Warriors, I just heard. See, I was sort of like worried about the Warriors. Not saying like they're gonna lose, but they might be challenged this year. But now they got a new motivation. You know, this is their last year in Oakland. You know, they moved to San Francisco next year. They said they want to win one that's uh, lead the Oakland fans something to uh, cheer about. So that might be a good enough motivation that they go on. Because that's what it's all about. You got the same team. You're the better team. You guys got to stay motivated. That's usually what takes teams down or they split up or whatever it is. But if you stay motivated, you got the better talent. I mean, there's no reason why you shouldn't win. So 
Warriors once again finished first. You know they finished second last year. The War Rockets finished first, as far as a uh, record. But you know the Warriors beat them in the Western Finals. So um, I got the Warriors finishing first. So that's no surprise to nobody. That's my uh, you know if you was listening, you know who will meet who in the playoffs and all that. But um, we're gonna break that down in a second. Um, let's go to. Uh, who I think will win MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, and Rookie of the Year. Um, my MVP this year, I think Kawhi Leonard will win it this year. If, like I said, if he's motivated like he say he is, he play all year long. Toronto finish either first or second. I think he will take the war home. I think he'll average close to 30 a game for the Raptors. He'll definitely be the go-to scorer there. And play good on the defensive side of the ball. Um, like I said, especially if they finish first in the East, which is potentially they could, I think um, he could be the MVP. That's my leader. Um, of course, potentially other guys, LeBron James, of course. Um, Anthony Davis would be a uh, um, contender. That's uh, Bishop uh, Atapakuko from Milwaukee, the Greek Freak. He could be a potential MVP. Um, they have my top four there. Um, Russell Westbrook. Um, depending on how Oakland Summer City go, any of the Warriors, unless like, uh, well, they could, though, they cast each other out, but one of them have a monster, like, uh, average 30, over 30 a game, either uh, Curry or Durant, if they can do that, one of them two could be a potential, but they'd probably cast each other out for the most part. But um, I think Kawhi got the better chance of winning it, so I picked him to win the award this year, bar injury, of course. I think he will be the leader for that. Defensive player of the year, Draymond Green. And I think the Warriors will finish first in the West. And I think he'll make it known that he should deserve the award. Um, he could guard all five positions on the floor. Uh, I think Rudy Gobert won it last year. Um, but like I said, Defensive player of the year is hard to predict who. Um, but uh, I'm going to go with Draymond just because I think the Warriors will finish first in the West. And he'll play most of the year. And I think they'd probably give it to him. And he, you know, I think it was screwed. Um, I think it was the year before last, or maybe even last year, you could say he could have won. But um, I got him with it this year. And my rookie of the year is Luka Donix. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I might be wrong. The Dallas Mavericks rookie from York. Um, I think he just go ahead the most opportunity. Um, him and Dennis Smith Jr. The Mavericks are going to be fun to watch. They got a nice little team squad building there. And even though I got them finish at 13th, but you know, they could push, you know, maybe compete for a while, maybe for a playoff spot. DeAndre Jordan, um, underrated, but he's defensive center. So it'd be enough uh, ball score. I think Dirk would be more of a role player. Um, but they'd be an interesting, fun team to watch this year. So watch out for the Mavericks. But I think he'll win the reward this year. Uh, I think all other rookies there just be on bad teams, unless they have like monster numbers, like finish like 25 a game or so, which I don't see any of these rookies doing. So I think he'll win the award. All right, so let's go back to who I think will drive in the playoffs. We we'll start with the Eastern Finals, who I think will get there. I think the top two seeds will make it. I think the Boston Celtics will be there again, and I think it will be the Toronto Raptors. Um, but I think the Celtics will overcome them. Um, I believe uh, they'll just be too deep for the Raptors. Um, I think Kyrie Irvin got something to prove. I think he stay if he stays healthy. Him, you know, he's a little injury prone, but I think he has something to prove. I think he will be the factor, and he will get the Celtics to the finals. I think they will defeat the Raptors. Um, and these are fine. I ain't gonna predict games and all that because we really don't know. Like I said, these two teams might not even make it here. We got ended up, we got a long way to go. So I'm not gonna predict exactly how many games, but I think the Celtics will win the East. In the West, on the more and more I heard some uh, experts saying it, I'm on board with the Lakers. I think the Lakers will make it to the Western Finals. I think they will beat the Warriors, but I still think the Warriors will take them out. I think LeBron James, uh, unfortunately, will face the Warriors again. And it'll be the same old song. But I think, well, I'm not predicting the games on this series either, but I think it'll at least go six or seven games. I think it'll be a hard four series. The young guys will get some uh, experience. And the Warriors will win that tough series. 
So that means my NBA Finals is the Golden State Warriors and the Boston Celtics. I think the Celtics will push the Warriors a little bit. They got the talent too. I think it'll go at least six games. Not predicting really. I think it'll be a tough series for the Warriors. Probably the most challenging one yet. But I think the Warriors will still overcome the Celtics and win the series and win their third straight championship three out of five years. Golden State will once again be an NBA champion, but I think it'll just be a tougher role this year than it was in the previous years. So the Warriors will be a champion that I predict. Uh, the Red will be satisfied that he might leave again. I think this will be the last year for the Warriors. I think somebody of emerge, either the Lakers will improve, or maybe one of the teams in the East, Boston, um, will improve or be um, good enough. I think the West is getting stronger with Utah, Oklahoma City, and like I say the Lakers, so um, I think the Warriors, either somebody gonna leave, something's gonna happen, I think they'll beat the throne the year after. I think they'll win it this year, but I think the next year, predicted in the future, will be the year they'll be the throne, or maybe the ramp will really leave, you know, which is a rumor that's put out there right now. And he's not denying the rumor either, he's saying it's potential he could leave, so. Um, but I think they can go off, they send him off to the sunset, they win three or five years. Um, and number four overall for the Warriors in the last so it'll be four or five years excuse me but it'll be three straight so I was wrong about that yeah four or five years it'll be three straight it'll be the Rats um, third in a row and that's probably what threw me off there but everybody else will have four the uh, Clay Thompson, Steph Curry and um, Draymond there had four rings so that's, that's how I think the NBA season is going to fall out it all starts tomorrow night. Doublehead on TNC, Celtics, Sixers, and Thunder Warriors. Two good games already to kick off the season. Um, NBA season, sometimes mostly predictable. Probably out of all the leagues, they were easy to predict who left and who the finalists would be, but you never know with injuries. You know, injuries are going to pop out of nowhere, potential trades, so you never know. Um, but that's if uh, everything stayed away at all, that's the way it is. That's how I think it's going to turn out. So I got the Warriors meeting the Celtics in the finals, but the Warriors winning it once again, four and five years and three straight. Um, so that'll do it for this special. I want to say thank you to everyone. Um, it was pretty long, I want to say. Yeah, it says at least a half hour to 40 minutes, I think I've been talking. So I uh, broke down everything that I think is going to happen. Um, I put everything up on Instagram and Facebook um, so everybody can watch and NBA season great great sports sports start getting good this year NFL in full effect NBA about to roll if you're a hockey fan NHL and the baseball playoffs of course is in full strength as well so that'll do it um, enjoy the rest of your week happy Monday once again thank you for everybody who watched the Monday night football hangover Monday morning football hangover this morning with me and um, of course, the next blog will be Wednesday as the Broncos will host the Arizona Cardinals. I will break down that game and give you my power rankings for week number seven coming up this week. I'm Troy West said, Thank you for watching another presentation of the Silent Sports video blog, episode 66, NBA season preview special. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you next time. Enjoy the rest of your week. Thanks so much.